Okay, so I'm on my way to a property today to do some measurements for uh, some mulch uh, that a customer wants an estimate on that we're most likely going to do uh, the work for. Um, and uh, I should know likely by Wednesday, it's Monday, um, whether or not they're going to have us do the work. So I'll send over an estimate uh, and a request for a deposit, and we'll go from there. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to attempt to attach three separate videos to each other. Number one, so I can learn for experience um, and, and produce better videos without having to have a digital creator uh, do this kind of stuff for me. So bear with me on all this um, as I'm going through today's video. And, and uh, one of my big goals for this season is to get good and familiar with video editing so I can put some better content out there um, when I'm trying to share stuff with you folks about how to do things. And hopefully, you know, you're gonna find these videos beneficial and, and it is my intention and hope that you're able to use them to help you uh, yield a, um, a really good profit for yourself and to avoid any pitfalls that could possibly uh, interrupt um, uh, your success. Okay, so I'm over at Abraham Run today, and we're going to do an estimate uh, to, we're going to take some measurements to figure out how much mulch is needed to mulch this property. I've helped this customer in the past with leaf removal here or there, and done some planting, and, and tore out some shrubs and that kind of stuff in the past. So today, again, we're going to take some measurements on mulch, and how I do this is I always use my phone. Um, to talk to instead of uh, writing everything down on paper so I have a point of reference with visual that I can see. So I'm going to do the best I can to hold the camera, uh, but the, uh, once I get done with the measurements, I'll have uh, some uh, more information here that I typically look at to help determine what my estimates are that you might find to be um, valuable. So we're going to switch the camera over now. And what I'm using, this is a measurement wheel that I got from Advanced Turf Solutions in Fishers, Indiana. Um, it's got a reset button on it. I really like it because of that. So there's a, this is a black mulch and it all has natural edging. So I believe she wants the beds to be edged. And what you can see, you can notice right here, there's an invisible pet fence sign. So we need to find out where the invisible fence is or put a note in there so we don't end up cutting it um, when we're taking the measurements. Um, so anyway, all I did is basic algebra. It's not 100% on, it's about 98, 99%, but I got a 10 foot measurement and I come through here and I've got a nine foot measurement and I'm gonna subtract 10% of that figure for the mulch there. Then I've got 14 by six minus 10% again, and then I'm gonna come out and do nine feet by 12 feet. Okay, so seven feet by 10 feet. And then right here, it's probably going to be uh, six feet by four feet minus 25%. And then there's a three by three tree right there. I've done this for so many years. I've gotten really good at, at estimating, just kind of looking at figures and kind of trying to conclude what I believe I have. And typically, once I do a job once, I know for the future what I need for that property. So we've got five feet. come over here by 30 feet and what you'll notice there is they've got a buried down spout and sometimes that can come beyond the bed you'll see right there right where the tip of that measuring wheel is that's an irrigation head um, so you have to be once you've done this enough and, you, and uh, you've been through um, you know, you, these types of obstacles, you become familiar with looking for them and addressing those issues with customers before you do any work. You got 20 feet there. By 16 feet, we're going to subtract 10% on that too. Um, I always tell my customers that they don't have to be home when I do this because it's faster for me to do it unless they want me to see something, and sometimes they do want to be there 
there's a 13 by six. Um, another thing that I do, I, you know, you'll notice, well, you wouldn't notice this because I didn't show it on the video, but there are no hydrangeas on this property and there are no um, types of uh, plants that would be hurt by um, the product called Preen, which has the active ingredient trifluralin in it. And so that's what I use more times than not. There's some other stuff out there that's a little more potent here or there, depending on what you have, but Preen has always done well. And what we would do when we come through here, if we saw any major weeds, like thistle or anything, we would spray those first and either immediately cover them with mulch or spray them and wait a few days and cover them with mulch, depending. But in most cases, we would spray them and then cover them right away. Uh, here we've got 10 feet by seven feet, 13 feet, by six feet, 10 feet, by 12 feet, and then finally we've got 11 feet by five feet. Now you'll see here there is a light post here and we have to be sure to discuss that with the customer because we don't know where that invisible or that, that wire is buried. And then you could see also this bed, it butts up to the driveway. And if you're not careful when you're mulching that, what can happen is that can wash off into the driveway. So there's a special way that we edge that to help create a little bit of a trough to prevent that stuff from happening. And that's how we take a measurement. Now, um, I round about on my measurements, okay? And I do that for a couple of reasons when it comes to mulch. Um, I typically will round a little bit higher than what I believe I need because who knows what could happen. We could get some bad mulch. We could accidentally over mulch some areas and not realize it. There's a lot of things that can happen. And my philosophy is it's better to have more than you need uh, than to have less and have to go back. So if there's any extra mulch, I could take it on to the next property. And I let my customers know ahead of time that they're not paying, for example, if I have the mulch delivered at their property, they're not paying for the mulch. They're paying for the job. I'm gonna do approximately a two inch application throughout the entire property. Um, and uh, uh, that's what they're ultimately paying for. So I, I learned to discuss that with customers years ago because I would come in and I'd have five or 10 yards delivered at driveway to save myself some time and not have to go to, um, uh, the farm in the morning, stand in line with other trucks to get mulch. And then I'd get done, and it was a two yard job, you know, and I did that intentionally, so I'd have three yards on the truck ready for the next project later in the day. And people say, hey, what do you do with my mulch? And um, when I was on Angie's List, I've got well over, I have almost 500 reviews on Angie's List, and I haven't advertised with them probably in six or seven years, and I don't know that I ever will. That's a video for itself. Um, but um, I have um, a very, very high rating on that. Um, site but there were some cases where people were writing negative reviews or in the review they would hint at hey you know we didn't get all what we paid for or something like that which quite simply wasn't the case so now what I'm going to do sometimes if, if I had to go to several places and I had an appointment maybe an hour or so from now I would sit here in my truck and do the math to figure out how much mulch that I need but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the office. I'm going to do my math there, create a sheet, and then send out the estimate. And, and these people want this project done at the top of March, or actually May, excuse me. Uh, so I've got plenty of time. But I'm getting all these requests coming in now that uh, I need to get on it and get them done. That way when they call me back and they say, hey, go ahead and do the work, I just pull out the estimate, I look at it, and it's set. But what I will do on this one, as I do on all of them, is I will send over the estimate. Uh, and it will be good for 48 hours. And if they want to be scheduled, I'll tell them I'll need that back within, you know, by the expiration date uh, on the estimate, along with a 50% deposit. That helps seal in uh, the sale. So I don't have to worry about people canceling on me and all that kind of stuff. And in a case, in a situation like this with this customer, she's really looking for someone that will show up and do the work. She feels very comfortable with us. We've done work for her over the years. At some point in the past, I'm quite confident that we did mulch. For, uh, for them too. It might have been prior to me getting on the QuickBooks because typically when I'm in QuickBooks, I'll put notes about how much product I use for any given um, uh, project for a customer. So anyway, um, I'm going to follow up here in a little bit uh, with um, a uh, uh, 
uh, a follow-up video on the figures and everything that I put together. Okay, so I'm back at home now, and actually, it's Tuesday morning. It's no longer Monday. It's the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. And normally, especially in season, I would actually work to get the estimate back to the customer the same day, no matter what, even if that means I have to stay up a little bit late in my office or late at night um, and go to bed a little bit later. Uh, but in this particular situation, the customer really likes us. We've worked with them for many years. Uh, we're almost, I'm almost certain that we've got the contract, even though we don't have it signed back, and I did send it to them this morning. Uh, so I just I, uh, got it sent over today. Uh, what I want to do briefly is show a book that I created, and you can screenshot this if you want to. I created this book um, a few years back, uh, and I use this book when I do mulch job estimates. And I, I do it for a couple of reasons. It makes it easier for me to refer back to something, even though I run QuickBooks and I can pull up information there. But having a book that I can have at my side also helps. Now, you got to understand, I'm 40, 45, I'll be 46 next month. When I grew up, we had printed calendars that, you know, you would carry around with you like this. If you're watching my videos, you've seen me probably break this out before. I love them. I use them. I will never get away from them. I just like having a hard copy of an estimate. I also have an e-copy as well, but I like a hard copy estimate. That way I don't have to rely on a phone um, or anything electronic that needs a battery or maybe even service uh, for it to work. Uh, but the book that I created here... I'm going to put it up sideways. If you want to screenshot, you can. Um, uh, maybe not. It's very basic, but it, it essentially allows me a place on paper together to record the customer's information, the measurements, and, and, and you know, uh, important uh, the measurements, excuse me, for the property and important notes. Uh, so that way, um, I've got something to refer to. And then as I fill them out, okay, if I don't get an estimate, if I do, I've got all, um, a single place where all, they are all at. And so come next spring, I can start flipping through these and calling people and getting estimates um, um, or getting schedules. And another thing, too, what I like to do is I always check with the customer when I do these estimates. If nothing has changed uh, and I've got a record of the measurements, um, then I can give them an updated estimate based on cost. You know, they haven't had a fence installed. They haven't, you know, increased the bed uh, bedding or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it's quite simple for me. So this this one estimate that I do now isn't the only estimate they're going to get. They'll get another estimate next year. And I'm not aggressive with my estimates, by the way. I don't keep following them. This I send one out their way. More times than not, customers reply. Every And, and they, they have us do the work. Every once in a while, I'll have somebody say, hey, don't send me an email or don't contact me. Okay, fine. We won't. It's But most of my business that I get is just from being proactive and sending stuff out to them. So... I typically bill out $105 per the yard of mulch delivered and installed, and, la and that does include cleaning and some basic edging, not spade edge edging, um, and, and edging of beds that have already been edged in the past when they were created. But that that estimate, that cost, is pendant, uh, you know, on there not being a real extensive cleanup. Um, because I have to take different things into consideration if it is. Do I need to spray some herbicide down and, you know, leave the beds alone for a week or two before I come in and, and work on top of that? You know, I mean, I, I, there are some cases where we, where, you know, we're going to remove uh, weeds, but I'll be honest with you, I prefer putting an herbicide on it if I can um, and covering it up with mulch. Uh, the herbicide's not going to go anywhere, um, especially if you let it dry. Um, and you know, you're going to kill that off versus trying to pull it out and maybe not getting the whole weed. And the, the reason I started doing this is because specifically here in central Indiana, in my opinion, the worst weed that we get in mulch beds is the doggone thistle. And that stuff is so deep under the ground that you, you pull it and you think you have it and you didn't. And what you really did is you motivated it to spread and grow back. And that stuff is just a real pain in the butt. So, and we get it. And usually when people call us, it's all over the place. So anyway... I don't know. Um, hopefully we get this job. I think we will, like I said before. I'm excited for them. They're good customers. And I, I gave them a couple other estimates um, while I was at it. Uh, just I, I, this kind of how I do things. So anyway, um, I'll continue to post videos on this kind of stuff. And if you notice today, I was able to get multiple videos into one. It was really super easy. I didn't think it was that simple, um, but I found a, a minute and 30 second video on YouTube. Uh, and now I can do these videos to where I can you know, show you before and afters and all that kind of stuff without any extensive editing and without having to pay a virtual creator. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, 
please do so. Let's help some other people out. And if you think I'm doing something, you know, backwards, you know, comment below. I mean, it's the only way you learn and the only way to grow is to see what others do and communicate with other people. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm back at home now, and actually, it's Tuesday morning. It's no longer Monday. It's the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. And normally, especially in season, I would actually work to get the estimate back to the customer the same day, no matter what, even if that means I have to stay up a little bit late in my office or late at night um, and go to bed a little bit later. Uh, but in this particular situation, the customer really likes us. We've worked with them for many years. Uh, we're almost, I'm almost certain that we've got the contract, even though we don't have it signed back, and I did send it to them this morning. Uh, so I just I, uh, got it sent over today. Uh, what I want to do briefly is show a book that I created, and you can screenshot this if you want to. I created this book um, a few years back, uh, and I use this book when I do mulch job estimates. And I, I do it for a couple of reasons. It makes it easier for me to refer back to something, even though I run QuickBooks and I can pull up information there. But having a book that I can have at my side also helps. Now, you got to understand, I'm 40, 45, I'll be 46 next month. When I grew up, we had printed calendars that, you know, you would carry around with you like this. If you're watching my videos, you've seen me probably break this out before. I love them. I use them. I will never get away from them. I just like having a hard copy of an estimate. I also have an e-copy as well, but I like a hard copy estimate. That way I don't have to rely on a phone um, or anything electronic that needs a battery or maybe even service uh, for it to work. Uh, but the book that I created here... I'm going to put it up sideways. If you want to screenshot, you can. Um, uh, maybe not. It's very basic, but it, it essentially allows me a place on paper together to record the customer's information, the measurements, and, and, and you know, uh, important, uh, the measurements, excuse me, for the property and important notes. Uh, so that way, um, I've got something to refer to. And then as I fill them out, okay, if I don't get an estimate, if I do, I've got all, um, a single place where all, they are all at. And so come next spring, I can start flipping through these and calling people and getting estimates um, um, or getting schedules. And another thing, too, what I like to do is I always check with the customer when I do these estimates. If nothing has changed uh, and I've got a record of the measurements, um, then I can give them an updated estimate based on cost. You know, they haven't had a fence installed. They haven't, you know, increased the bed, uh, bedding or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it's quite simple for me. So this this one estimate that I do now isn't the only estimate they're going to get. They'll get another estimate next year. And I'm not aggressive with my estimates, by the way. I don't keep following them. This I send one out their way. More times than not, customers reply. Every And, and they, they have us do the work. Every once in a while, I'll have somebody say, hey, don't send me an email or don't contact me. Okay, fine. We won't. It's But most of my business that I get is just from being proactive and sending stuff out to them. So... I typically bill out $105 per the yard of mulch delivered and installed, and, la and that does include cleaning and some basic edging, not spade edge edging, um, and, and edging of beds that have already been edged in the past when they were created. But that that estimate, that cost, is pendant, uh, you know, on there not being a real extensive cleanup. Um, because I have to take different things into consideration if it is. Do I need to spray some herbicide down and, you know, leave the beds alone for a week or two before I come in and, and work on top of that? You know, I mean, I, I, there are some cases where we, where, you know, we're going to remove uh, weeds, but I'll be honest with you, I prefer putting an herbicide on it if I can um, and covering it up with mulch. Uh, the herbicide's not going to go anywhere, um, especially if you let it dry. Um, and you know, you're going to kill that off versus trying to pull it out and maybe not getting the whole weed. And the, the reason I started doing this is because specifically here in central Indiana, in my opinion, the worst weed that we get in mulch beds is the doggone thistle. And that stuff is so deep under the ground that you, you pull it and you think you have it and you didn't. And what you really did is you motivated it to spread and grow back. And that stuff is just a real pain in the butt. So, and we get it. And usually when people call us, it's all over the place. So anyway, I don't know. Um, hopefully we get this job. I think we will, like I said before. I'm excited for them. They're good customers. and I, I gave them a couple other estimates 
um, while I was at it. I just, I, I this kind of how I do things. So anyway, um, I'll continue to post videos on this kind of stuff. And if you notice today, I was able to get multiple videos into one. It was really super easy. I didn't think it was that simple, um, but I found a, a minute and 30 second video on YouTube. Uh, and now I can do these videos to where I can, you know, show you before and afters and all that kind of stuff without any extensive editing and without having to pay a virtual creator. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, Please do so. Let's help some other people out. And if you think I'm doing something, you know, backwards, you know, comment below. I mean, it's the only way you learn and the only way to grow is to see what others do and communicate with other people. Thanks for watching.